hello guys and welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to be creating a thumbnail carousel by syncing two oxygen's dynamic slider and we're going to be doing that with a template that i have prepared because i don't want to start from the scratch because of how the oxygen's dynamic slider is designed it is just pure code so i've prepared a template that you can use as a starter template so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to head over to paste bin and then i have a an oxygen copy and paste code here this is the native oxygen's copy and paste code available from oxygen 4.1 and above so i'm just going to copy it and i'm going to get head over to an empty page and i'm just going to go here import and i'm going to paste that and and it's going to import my um my template so here i have um a slider which is both of them makes use of repeater because they are dynamic slider. And for my dynamic slider, the query, I'm using a custom query, which is post. Okay. And the reason I'm not using default is because I'm not in the, you know, the post template. I'm on an ordinary page. So I have to use custom. So you can, you know, change your query. You must have your post items. Uh, the images I'm using is the featured image for my post. So I assume you already know how to set up your repeater. And for here, I'm setting up this uh, image also as the background image using dynamic data for the featured image of the post. So now the only thing you need to do when you import this is to go to the main slider and then you're going to rename the ID to um, main underscore slider and you'll go to the thumbnail and then you're going to rename the ID to just thumbnail and that's it. And all the CSS, everything has already been written using those specific IDs. So I'm going to save this and I'm just going to go to the front end to see if it works. So I'm going to open the front end and check and uh, let's see. Yep, it's working. And that is it. Um, it's just simple and straightforward like that. Now, all you need to do is to start editing uh, to your heart's content. So let's say I wanted to make these. Um, Maybe I don't want this to be full screen. Okay. So I have my main, I have my thumbnail. I have my codes here uh, for the arrows. Now, the way this is set up is let me explain how this is set up. Very important because in case you need to, you know, move things around, the most important thing is to declare your thumbnail first. So you want to declare your thumbnail slider first. Um, if you haven't seen my video on full guide on oxygen's dynamic slider, I would recommend you see it. I'm going to link it at the top right corner. Now, so you're going to declare the swiper that you're going to be using for the thumbnail first. Very important. Before you declare the one you're going to be using for the main slider. If you declare this one first, it is not going to work. This has to be available first before these can use it uh, using this um, option. Thumbs, swiper, swiper 2. So it is saying that the thumbs for this main slider is going to be the sli swiper 2, but the swiper 2 should have already been initialized. So that has to come first. And another important um, option for this thumbnail is going to be this one. So this is what is really important here. Of course, alongside with um, a couple of other settings, like it has to be slide and uh, auto oh, well, the auto height has to do with the height. So I set it to false because I wanted to set the height. Uh, center slide true free mode true loop th true so just take a look at the settings and i've set my slide per view on these breakpoints this to five at 640 to 2.5 so this is my breakpoint settings and uh, for this one uh, just the same thing now what i did here was uh, for the main uh, for the swiper one which is the main uh, slider now i probably should have just called this um, main okay so i'm just going to change that so that it's not going to be confusing. So right, uh, swiper one is supposed to be main slider. This, this is supposed to be thumbnail. I'm going to update that code, that copy and paste so that you can thumbnail. So that is going to be easy. So now, that, which means I'm going to move this thumbnail to here. So uh, that means that the thumb is going to be thumbnail. So let's save that and see if I haven't broken anything. So it, it makes sense because it, it, it helps with, you know, reading. It helps you to understand which one you're working with instead of just saying swiper one and swiper two. And uh, everything is still working. Okay. So now I can 
easily reference it by saying, okay, the thumbnail has to come first, okay, before the main slider. So it's easier that way. So what if you wanted to, you know, edit this? Now, the structure, these two are just the parents of each of them, the main slider. So if I wanted to, say, uh, make this smaller, I could just go in there and uh, just give it a maximum width, like, say, maybe uh, 960 and set a margin left and right auto for that. And now, what is controlling the height of this? The height of this is being controlled by the slider itself and it's controlled with the ID. So you don't want to touch the classes of this thing because these are all universal sliders. Like I mentioned in the first video I did for this, this is the universal slider and it's going to affect all dynamic slider on the website. So uh, I want to change this height to like say uh, maybe 600 pixel. And so now uh, for the thumbnail, I probably want to set the maximum width of the overall container to the same was it 960 and I've already set my margin left and right to auto and in that case since it is that small I probably want to reduce the slide per uh, view from five so I'm gonna go in here I want to reduce it to like four so let me expand this so I'm looking for the thumbnail so where is the thumbnail yep so I'm gonna go to um, the breakpoints and change the slide per view here to four and let me save that and we're going to go to the front end and check and see how our adjustment is panning out so i'm going to refresh this and you can see that i still have my you know slider working perfectly so you could move this around so the in both code blocks there are custom css so for this first one you really don't have uh, much to do here it's just basically um factory settings so but for these you have all your custom css so you have custom styles uh, from here you can edit the you know the arrow you can edit the for instance my arrow color this is it and uh, the font size of the arrow so everything is comment is you know um, there are comments here to let you understand what is going on and uh, i have already hidden my um, nav my pagination the the way I did that I'm going to show you but let me show you uh, this CSS uh, for the arrow position you know I've moved the arrow 40% from the bottom and also from the right I just did some calculation to place them where you know they are placed based on percentage and um, now for these slides for the thumbnail I have set the slide the swiper slide to opacity of 0.4 so that i can set the active to one so it depends on what you want to do so even so i could go in here and set the uh transform translate so i could just say i think the new css property is called scale but so i, I probably just want to use that scale 0 0.8 uh yeah 0 0.9 is okay and then here i can set the scale now uh be careful how you use this because um it doesn't have a lot of browser support but i, I the, it's just another way of writing transform um transform a uh, scale okay that's just it's a it's a is a newer way of writing that but I, because i'm just demonstrating something i just want to be quick about it so uh let's look at that and i don't think i've added any transition to that so it might not just look good it's just going to be jerky okay you can see it's just jerky so i'm just going to add a transition here uh you know you say transition uh, I'm going to transition for the general purpose. Let me just make it uh, 0.4 seconds for everything. Uh, but sometimes you want to just uh, specify that it's the opacity, like opacity 0.4. And then I want to put a comma, like I use scale here. So I just say scale 0.4. Maybe I can make that 0.6 seconds. And let's see how that behaves. So I'm just going to refresh this and you can see that, you know, it just behaves nicely. Um, I'm not quite sure why uh, the cursor for the swiper is not a pointer. I guess it's just by design. And uh, personally, maybe if you want to put that, I think you can just go to the slide for the thumbnail slide. And I could just do that just by going here and just writing a cursor pointer. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but I just drop it on the ID of the, of the slide and let's see. 
I'm not quite sure if they have a, a custom option for the swiper settings to enable the the cursor uh, pointer. But yeah, but this this works and it looks decent. That's just basically it. You could just move these containers around. Let's say perhaps if you wanted this to move on top of this, you could just um, uh, set this and then place this, make it wrap this with a container and then make this absolutely positioned relative to that. So you could just play around with layout. That is up to you. But this is just how to get this to work. So once again, how this could work is that the the thumbnail slider is being uh, initialized first. The thumbnail slider, okay, with all the thumbnails, like I said, watch the first video I did, and then the main slider is initialized, and uh, we now use this option uh, to point to the swiper that we want to use as thumbs for this main slider, which is the thumbnail swiper that we initialized up here. And then we add this, um, this watch slider progress through so um, it can behave appropriately all right guys so that is all so all you need to do is to go in and copy that so i'm just going to update that right now so that you're going to have the thumbnail and the main slider in the code uh, so let me just uh, do that for some of you that haven't seen uh oxygen 4.1 copy and paste that's how it works so i'm just going to edit my pane it's a paste bin not a code pane and i'm gonna just paste the new one and save all right i'm gonna link this uh, in the description below so you can just get it and make sure it uh you copy and paste that just straight and then remember that once you paste it you want to change this id to main slider and this to thumbnail slider and what if you want to have more than one set of these on a page? Well, um, like I said, you have to watch that video that I did. You just have to initialize uh, another main slider too and give it an ID. That means you will have to go into the CSS and, you know, add uh, stuff for them, like just duplicate the CSS for the slider too. Okay. And then just configure it the way you want because each of these CSS, like you see main slider, so you can just duplicate for main slider two and thumbnail slider two, or you could um, use the commas if you want them to be identical to for the selectors just to share the properties. All right, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and you learned something. So if you did, please hit the like button, share this video with others and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, have a great day. Bye.